Hey, I'm Bart Massey, and today I want to talk to you about the SIP Longan Nano, a little embedded development board I've been having big fun with lately. At $5, I think it's probably the best bargain out there right now in terms of small development boards. And so I wanted to just talk about the hardware right now, show you a little bit about what it is, talk a little bit about what it is, and uh, later in another video, I'll show you how to program it in Rust. So here's the um, packaging it comes in. I bought mine from Seed Studio. That's hard to see. I'll try to get it set up here. Um, this is just a standard little thing. Like I say, this is a $5 board, um, which is pretty cool. I'm going to pop open the uh, foil here, and inside you'll find two things. You'll find the uh, accessories. The accessories that come with this are actually pretty interesting. It does come with, well, at least if you buy it from Seed, and I think no matter where you buy it, it comes with... Uh, bunch of pin headers, um, two sets of rows of pin headers so that you can solder pins onto it, which is a nice addition. You don't always get those with the thing. Um, and it also comes, more importantly, with a pretty nice little uh, molded case, which I believe is custom to this board. So that's kind of cool. It's got a bottom half. You'll notice that in the bottom half there are slots for the pins to go through. So if you want to solder the pins onto the board, they can stick down through there. And then it's got a top half that has holes for the little buttons that are on the side. It also has the buttons themselves. Now you'll notice there are only two holes and three buttons. Uh, that's because it um, has a short and a long version of the reset button. This took me a while to figure out so that you can use the recessed one if you don't want it to actually bump it. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, not going to solder the pins on today, but I am going to go ahead and clip the little buttons off and put this thing in its case. So let's take a look before I do that at the hardware itself. It comes in its own little sealed package. And what we've got here is a little microcontroller board. So this is based on the GD VF32 VF103. CB processor. So this is a RISC-V processor. This is an unusual choice for a processor in as much as it's uh, got this RISC-V architecture instead of the ARM architecture we're all used to from embedded devices. This is the back of the board. You can see on the back there's a um, SDHC card slot so you can put some flash in there if you want to. And on the right there is a JTAG. Um, I've got this upside down. Don't I? <clears throat> on the left there is this JTAG um, port so that I can do debugging with it. And then on the right is a USB-C connector. So let's take a look at the front of the board. Um, the... Um, USB-C connector is actually just running at full speed, but it is an on-the-go USB port on this thing, and it is, uh, so it can do both host and client side with the right software. Uh, you can see the side of that JTAG, you can see the two little buttons, you can see where the pinhole rows go. You can also see the screen, which is a really prominent feature of this. On top of everything else, this little $5 board comes with a 160 by 80 LCD screen, which is kind of a neat little uh, feature to have on a board in this class. And that means that you can do little display and graphics things with it, which is kind of neat. It also has an RGB LED on the board, uh, and that's about it for hardware. The processor is uh, a, uh, like I say, an, a 32-bit uh, RISC-V part, the GD, um, and it has a uh, 100 megahertz max clock speed, 100 and something megahertz max clock speed, so it's pretty fast. It's got 128 megabytes of flash, which is very generous. This is the CB. There's some older long gun nanos with the C8, which are smaller. Look for the ones with the CB. It's definitely worth having the slightly more um, RAM and flash. Um, 
So 128 mega flash and 32, uh, sorry, 128K of flash and 32K of RAM. And so it's got enough, you know, for embedded stuff to do a reasonable job. So I've cut the little tabby bits off the plastic case. Um, putting this little case together is actually a little bit tricky. Here's how I recommend you do it. I recommend you use the longer buttons because while you're developing with this thing, you're gonna be all the time wanting to push the reset button and the boot button because that's how you bootload this thing. So drop the little buttons into the holes. They go with the big, they're T-shaped buttons. I don't, I don't think this camera is gonna be able to show them very well. We can try. Um, these little funny T-shaped, no, little funny T-shaped buttons. And you wanna put the big part of the T on the inside because that's what's gonna push down against the actual button part and so you basically just cut, cut them loose from the all three of them loose from the case and then you stick the two big ones down into the two big holes in the case where they obviously go which is perhaps easier said than done I remember last time i had some trouble with this and i'm having trouble again okay And I wish I could show you this, but my camera setup's just not up to it. Maybe someday I'll get a little fancier with my videoing and we'll be able to do this. Um, you may also want to use a knife or something to clean off these buttons before you try to push them in. I'm kind of thinking right now that I've got this too big to go through the hole. Anyway, once you've done that, you drop the screen into the front of the thing and then clamp the two halves together and you've got the thing cased up and it's ready to power up and run. Um, there's one of them in. Let's put another one in and we'll, be, we'll call this a day. And once you've got, dang it, I've dropped one. <sighs> Just a moment. Ah, forget it, I'll find it later. Um, once you've got it into the case, ideally, which I'm going to do later because obviously it's a little struggling to get it together. You just clamp the case halves together. Now you got the thing all boxed up and protected, and it's nice because the JTAG is still accessible from the with the case on. The pins are still accessible with the case on. It's a pretty sweet setup. So once we've done all that, we can apply some power to this, and it doesn't come up with a particularly interesting demo on it. Uh, it comes up with a uh, thing that lights up the screen but just pretty much oh huh that's odd i apparently already flashed a demo onto this so this is a demo i flashed on there anyway the other thing the normal thing it comes up with is just with lights and uh the rgb led cycling and you're up and running and you can absolutely upload firmware to it through the USB-C. that is one of its features uh Having said that, um, you can also upload through the JTAG and you can set up OpenOCD and GDB to be able to talk through this. Uh, Cypede also, the company that makes these boards, also sells, if you can find it, although they're harder, getting harder and harder to find, a little $7 um, JTAG d unit, which is really a very good price for such a thing, that you can use with this and other things to actually debug them, that'll talk. Um, to open OCD, which is sort of the standard solution these days for OC for JTAG software. So that's the Cypede. I'm really happy with them. I've been having big fun playing with them. And, uh, you know, you got very little to lose by giving them a try at five bucks a pop. So I hope that was helpful.